Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the third episode of the Dynamo tutorial. In this tutorial we're gonna uh, draw some walls and a floor. So for the example we can draw a wall like this, like this. And we can draw a floor, um, floor. And we can use the rectangle like this with, okay. And we have a floor, but we can also do this with Dynamo. And if we do this with Dynamo, it will be fully interactive with our Dynamo file. So let's delete this one and let's go to Dynamo. All right, for this tutorial, we don't need any of the packages. We just need the standard Dynamo um, nodes. So the first thing what we gonna do is we wanna create a floor and a wall. So we type in the search entry wall. And if we search a while, we can see by curve and height. Yes. And we also need a floor. So let's add the floor node as well. Floor. And if we if I create a raft floor by level, no, we need to create it by uh, our lines. Let me see. This is what we need. Yes. By the way, we have two uh, nodes of this. They look the same, but the difference between them is we got our curve curve input and we have an input of a poly curve. Those are two different things. Uh, I can show you that in a bit. Let's use the poly curve for this one. And our wall needs a curve. So we can see the uh, difference between a curve and a poly curve. All right, first, the first node. Wall by curve and height. This node allows us to create a wall as it says by curve and height. The input is a curve, a height, a level, so the level where we want to place our wall on, and a wall type, which type of wall you want to place. And the output is our created wall. Uh, for the floor, it's almost the same, only we don't need a height, because that's already in the family type of the floor. For this one, we need a poly curve, the floor type, which floor we want to use, and on which level we want to place it. And the output is our floor. So first, let's fill up the floor type and the level. And for this one as well, the level and the wall type. What we need is floor type, floor types. We select it. We can see in the drop down menu, you can choose a floor type. Let's say we want a foundation slab for the example. We can connect it. The next thing, sorry. The next thing what we need is a level. So let me type in level, levels, levels. S select an active uh, level in the document. Well, we want to place it on level one. That's our uh, main level. So let's connect it up to the level. And we can also connect this up to our wall by curve and height. Level. All right. For the floor, we only need our lines or our poly curve actually. And for the wall by curve, we need a wall type. So, so all right, let's make wall type, wall type. And as you can see, it's almost the same as the floor type, only you can select here a wall. So let's select, which one do we want? We have, ah, Mazornary. And let's connect it up. All right, the next thing what we need is a height. So we can use a number for it, number. And let's say we want a wall three meters high. So we type in three meter and we connect it. Now the easiest part is done. The only thing what we need is a curve and a poly curve. So let's make them. As we search for poly curve, poly curve. Offset by points. Make poly curve from sequence of lines connected points. For closed curve, last point should be in the same location as the start point. All right. Poly curve put by points. The input is our points. And this one, I will show you in a bit what it means. It means uh, it closed the whole uh, curve actually. So we get a square or a rectangle. And the output is our poly curve. So the first thing what we need are some points. So let's quickly make some points. In the first video, 
I'll do a little bit more in explaining how to make those points and what it all means. So you can go to our first tutorial. So let me copy and paste this four times because we want to make a, a square or a rectangle. It doesn't really matter. So copy and paste it. And now we need to make a, a square or a rectangle. So we need some numbers. Let's use the slider for this one actually, because we can play with it. Our first point is 0, 0, 0. Yes. Uh, our second point is, let's say, 5 meters. 5 meters in the x direction. And let me zoom out a bit so you can see the next point. Ah, there it is. Go back to Dynamo. Let's connect it up to this point as well. Uh, did I say this point or maybe this one? No, this point. And next thing that we need is another number. So we copy and paste it. And this is for our Y direction. So from here to there. Let's say five meter as well. So we make a square and we need to connect that up to our Y direction. And as you can see, created the other point and in this y direction so we have now four points let me see this is point one is zero zero point two is over there point three yeah and point four i'm checking this because the order of the points is uh, necessary for this uh, node let's make a list of those points so we can connect it up in our poly curve by point so list list create uh, we have four points, so we need four items. Item one, item two, item three, and item four. And let's connect our list to our polycurve by points. All right, as you can see, it already made three lines. And this is where the connect last to first. So for this line, we need to change it from the default value false to true. So we can search for uh, boolean and if we use this node this allows us to change true or false the output is what you selected so let's turn it to true turn it on and connect it and as you can see it made our square and what i mean by our order of points let me just show you change this and then as you can see it made a whole uh, different uh, figure that's because our order is wrong so we got uh, point 1, point 2, and then it goes point 3, it's over there. But point 3, we got it in item 4. So our third point is actually now this point. So it goes from here to here to here, and goes to here, and then goes back because we set it to true. So that's why you need to order, uh, why you need to cor have a correct order. So let's connect it up back, like so, and we have a square. And now we can connect our polycurve to our floor and to our wall. And if we connect it, you already can see uh, it gives us an error field because this is a polycurve and our wall by curve needs a curve. A curve is the same as a line. Let me use a watch node so you can see the output of our floor and our uh, wall. So let's connect it. Oh, sorry connection like so it did create a floor so what we need to do now is to create uh, a single curve from our poly curves so let me search for curve and poly returns curve of the poly curve yes so this node allows us to uh, give in a poly curve and it returns all our curves or all, all our lines so let's connect it and as we can see it gives us four lines or curves if we connect it up to our walls connect you can see it put out four walls if we go to Revit you can see it created four walls and it created our floor on the bottom so now we have those uh, sliders in a dynamo let's go back dynamo to our sliders and this is here we can change our figure with 
So let me change it. Let's say I want it two meters something. You can see we have a rectangle right now. If we go back to Revit, change with it. All right, for the other example, let's say uh, this, set it over here, and then we need our Revit. Because we have our script on automatic, so it will live update every time we um, we change something in the script. So let me zoom in a bit to our bolts, and as we as we change this slider, you can see our wall change with it, and our floor as well because we hooked it up. All right. Uh, this is actually the, the basics of placing walls and floors and let them interact with each other and let them interact with your input. Uh, we, by your ID, made also a script. Let me save this script first so you can download it from our site. I put a link in the description to it. Save. Yep, save, I know. All right, and let's close this script. All right, let's open our own script. That's wall and floor. Let's open it. And give it a little bit of time. And let delete me this wall and floor. All right, this is our script, what we made. Uh, we also need some inputs. And we made our own uh, node for this. If we double click on this node. Use the same method as we did before. There are some uh, other nodes in it as well, like an offset. And, <coughs> sorry. To make our points, we uh, made a Python script to do that for us. So let's go back to our script. Let me show you. <coughs> sorry. Our input is uh, an area. A height, a level, a wall type, and a floor type. That's all what it needs. And the output is our floor of a, a wall, a floor, and our geometry. This is because we can see uh, which point it's made. So let me run the script. All right. As you can see in Revit, it made uh, a big room. It's a big square room because uh, add some formulas in this script to make it always square. A little bit slow, but all right. So now, if we change manual to automatic, we can yeah, play with it around with a slider. You can see it in a in our Revit file. It's gonna get smaller and bigger. So, for example, if you 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 need to change your measures or your measures your uh, dimensions from your wall, uh, you can easily use some scripts like this because. Uh, first of all, we want a room or an area of 64, for the example. And then someone says, no, no, I want it smaller or I want it bigger. So let's say I want it uh, 49. And now it's 49. That's it for today. If you liked it, please hit that like button and check out our website. Bye bye.